to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Today, Lisa Howdy is back on the show with me. Lisa Howdy founded Paradigm Design Group way back in 2001. Then in 2020, Lisa rebranded her Houston six-person hospitality design firm to become PDG Studios. And she also created a new luxury residential design division named Bella Studio. For 19 years, Lisa's firm has worked with notable hotels and restaurants locally and abroad. And with this recent expansion into residential design, Lisa now partners with like-minded clients that seek to you know, bridge that gap and that distance between hospitality and home, right? You know, the clients that want their home to feel like they're away, right? Okay. Now with the rebranding, Lisa also introduces Bella's Kitchen, the charitable arm of PDG Studios, which is dedicated to helping local hospitality businesses in need. And I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Jaipur Living. Jaipur Living offers the finest handmade rugs in a variety of price points. Jaipur Living is committed to the craftsmanship and the artfulness of handmade rugs and to keeping the age-old art alive. So to find out what they have to offer and how you can incorporate them into your next design project, register for your trade account at jpoorliving.com forward slash Luann. And this way you can get started. All righty. Now let's hear about Lisa and what prompted this rebrand and how she went about navigating and guiding her almost 20 year firm through this change. Hi, Lisa. Thanks so much for coming back to A Well-Designed Business. Hey, Luann. It's good to hear you again, and thanks for having me back. Yes. So, Lisa, the last time you were on the show, episode 502, uh, first of all, you wowed us with the level of um, that you had grown your business and um, the hospitality firm and the types of projects that you were doing. But you also teased us and said that you were rebranding and you were regrouping. And in 2020, you were going to relook at the way um, your company was set up and established and its focus. And so here we are, um, you know, almost three quarters of through 2020. And you sure have. You sure have done done a lot of things inside your business that are different. And of course, you know, the pandemic has forced some of those things. I'm sure we're going to learn being that you are primarily or were primarily a hospitality firm. But tell us first about the rebranding. You were not talking about rebranding a business that, you know, is doing a couple of hundred K a year and has one or two employees and you've been sort of swimming along and, you know, not really on a focus and a mission. You have a huge company that, you decided to rebrand. Tell us a little bit about that. What was the motivation and what does it look like on the other side of it? Well, those are all great questions. I know (laughs) I did too many. As soon as I said them, I'm like, Luann, you asked three questions there. Why don't you like back it up? (laughs) So, uh, yeah. So I, moving into 2020, we, you know, we started the year out in January as a whole new company, um, rebranded it, you know, it was time, it was time. We've been in business for 19 years. It'll be 20 years next September. And, um, it was time to just kind of revamp a little bit and make it more, you know, of who we are today. Mm. Um, we truly are a studio of designers. We, we collaborate a lot. We love, being together. We love, you know, feeding off of each other. And I really wanted to bring that to the forefront and, and truly kind of 
you know, re-energize who we are. Um, a lot of our work has also been pivoting over the last couple of years to be a lot more lifestyle oriented, design driven, um, boutique feeling, um, you know, very high end residential feeling. And so again, this just felt like it was a, it was a great time to kind of realign and just throw ourselves back out there as like, you know, here we are new and improved. And so, um, you know, I renamed the company PDG Studios. Again, we're a studio of creative thinkers here. And um, we also kind of branched out a little bit um, because of the pandemic. We also decided to branch out a little bit more and, and pull in residential work and also highlight um, a little bit more of our philanthropy work that I feel so strongly about and just kind of keep moving down that path. And um, we've been really excited about the direction, you know, we're going and, um, and just rethinking everything, you know, everything's um, a lot more intentionally placed with how we're doing our marketing and what our website looks like and the type of work that we're doing. And we're having fun, we're having fun doing it. Well, I mean, that's, that's what I love is the, the two things I just heard in there is that it is a good practice to continually assess, is this the business I want to run, right? Is this, mm -hmm. does this, is this look like me, smell like me, talk like me, walk like me, right? Because right. what you set out to do and what you accomplish certainly probably fulfilled all of that for a period of time. And then you come into this period of your life and you're thinking, is this really still reflect me, my values, my firm, the projects that we are gravitating to? Not that we're throwing any baby out with any bathwater. I hear that you're still a luxury high-end uh, hospitality firm, but just this whole inner looking of the studio and the way that you're talking about the collaboration and the way that your projects were developing into that boutique high-end residential feeling. Um, mm -hmm. It just is, it's good advice and it's good information for your colleagues listening to if they feeling like a little unsettled that it is okay to look it all over and peel things away and add things in and and kind of do a, a do-over within the the firm that exists right 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 yeah and I think you know just even in your own life yourself. I mean, think about how much you grow and change just through life, through experience. And just as you age in general, you have, you gain wisdom, right. And you, from different things that you've done or been exposed to, you continually keep growing. And I think that, you know, the best companies out there um, are the ones that constantly look within, like, you know, am I still on task with, who I am and what I am doing and where I want to be and how I want this to look. And does this truly reflect who I am? My name's on all of these things. And I want to be able to stand behind it and be like, yes, I feel fantastic about what we just put out there, that this reflects who we are um, and, and what we do. I love and so it. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's really important. And, you know, I think that again, as time goes on, you know, even when you do your own soul searching, you get exposed to different people, different people start coming into your life. Maybe you have a different life coach. Maybe you have started with a different pastor and he's, you know, giving you a different thought process and way that, you know, influences your thinking. And, and again, all of that plays into who you are and how you run your business. And I think that, um, again, as time goes by, I think you just have to kind of adjust accordingly as, um, what feels right. Mm. And, you know, and I think that, um, I'm just excited about where we're going with our company. I just, mm. I feel like, you know, 2020 is pivotal for so many people. I think we all thought, you know, at least I did in January one of 2020, like, woohoo, we're going to have a great year ahead of <laughs> us. And, you know, we've got all these exciting things ahead of us. I mean, we had change already on, on par, right. Mm. Cause we were changing the company and that was effective January one. But um, little did we know, a few months later, it was going to be even more of a change that all came into our play. And I think it's also forcing us to also really evaluate, right? Rewrite that business plan, rethink that thought process of the way you were doing business maybe isn't the way we should be doing business moving forward. Maybe it's a 
you know, we have to think a little bit differently. We have to think outside the box a little bit. And I think as designers, you know, we already are creative minded people anyway. So we're going to probably overthink it a little bit too, to some extent, <laughs> or you want to put it all back in the box and start over again. But um, still, I think, you know, there's just so many things I think in the forefront moving forward. It's, it's an interesting time to be a business owner, especially a small business owner. It's definitely a stressful time at times, um, just with all the ups and downs that go with, with everything in our economy right now. But at the same time, it is kind of exciting because really it's like you're starting at ground zero again and you're like, I get to just only go up from here, you know, and look at all these possibilities that are ahead of me now. And where else can I, where else can I take the business? Where else can I take my talents? Where else can I continue to hopefully influence others, not only with beautiful designs and abilities for people to touch, feel, see, but, you know, how else can I better what I'm doing in my little circle? You know, how do I better mankind and, and, and just be a better person as well? Mm. There's a lot of thought process that goes into it because you have to rethink everything. You have to rethink your marketing. You have to think, how is your social? What is your website? You know, all of those things come into play because, you still have the historical side of we are the experts and this is what we do and we do it really well. Right. Um, but we've also expanded and we can now do, you know, not that we never could before, but we're focused on doing some of these other elements too. And, um, so it is a very strategic plan of how you're doing it and it doesn't necessarily roll out overnight. It's something that you just kind of keep layering in a little bit more over time as you continue to, um, gain, you know, more following of people and, uh, you know, gaining their, uh, um, approvals or, or recognition or all of that. But I think, they still see that you are still an expert in your field. Mm. And, um, and I think it's just a matter of how it is continue to be portrayed, um, that it's just better. And it's, uh, you know, we're still the same people. I right. still, I didn't change. I can right. still design the same, right. <laughs> it's just how it's being presented now. And, and it's, again, it's a layered effect. Um, you know, you'll notice our social media from six months ago, three months ago to 30 days ago has even changed. It's, it's a much more um, curated feel and look and um, more in line with who we are. And it'll probably keep being tweaked a little bit as we keep moving through the next couple of months and seeing how the numbers run. Um, the same would be said with our blog posts and our marketing with email blasts and what have you. It's, you know, it's something that you have to constantly kind of keep paying attention to. And um, again, if you have really, really great consultants that you work with, they will help you kind of keep, you know, all of that on par and, and heading in the right direction. Because I obviously have a vision in mind of where I wanted to be ultimately. Um, and they're helping me kind of steer down that path. And then, you know, we're going to adjust accordingly as as you go down that road of like, wait a minute, that one's not working. So we need to turn right instead of left or whatever it might be. But you still have all the history behind you of what a great company you were, what great projects you've done um, and all of that. And, you know, I still have a, an amazing team that I still work with today that, um, you know, is still there. So we're still the same great company. We're just now new and improved and even better. Right, 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 right. And and I hear all, I hear all of it, and that's why I'm saying like I'm thinking myself um, on exactly that the layers and the nuances that have to go into a rebranding of this scale because mm -hmm. you know you cannot scare the clients that you had into thinking you've left that that genre you don't have you know we they know that you're capable of it but their interest is different right so in other words it's like if there's a fine dining restaurant and it's a tablecloth restaurant and you've gone to it for years and years and it's your favorite place you go anniversaries birthdays whatever and then one day you walk in and the door to the left is fine dining the door to the right is casual family style same owners 
right? And so you're thinking to yourself, well, but do you care about the fine dining anymore? Are you just interested in turning Mm -hmm. sandwiches? And so what we know is that a business owner like yourself can be, yes, all day. I'm still going to serve you up. And of course, I'm not making the relationship to one is um, luxury level and the other isn't. That's not the analogy to your business. It's just two different sectors. The high-end luxury hospitality sector that you discussed with us in our first episode. And if you have not heard Lisa's first episode, you're going to need to go there for the backstory on this, is is very specific and I would think very demanding and very, it's all about us, remember that, and now all of a sudden you have to, in my mind, combat where they're not looking and saying, oh, so wait, she's going to go design somebody's house in the Bahamas now, is she going to be on beck and call when I have a new wing to the hotel to put up, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the messaging. It's like keep everybody safe that you want to keep safe, but then start to, like you said, leaning to your social and your blog post and your email and start to let the rest of the people out there know right. that, hey, I'm available for your luxury home in the Bahamas, by the way, if you want it, right? <laughs> right. Well, and I think the other key thing is that our core principles never change. Right. You Good know, point. what is what is our mission statement and what is our core principles of who we are and what we do and how we work with our customers Um, regardless, it doesn't matter if you're a hotel, if you're a restaurant, if you're a home, you know, a winery, a spa, it doesn't matter. We, we do them all the same. We follow the same protocol. We follow the same procedures. Um, we treat all of our clients, you know, with the same utmost respect. Um, and and it's, it's not different even too, if we were doing a hotel, you know, if you're doing just one little space of the hotel, or if you're doing the entire hotel, we work with that ownership the same way. And so, um, again, those core principles, if anything, have not changed. If anything, we have made them probably a little bit stronger and, and uh, honed in on, you know, what that really is and um, training our team accordingly, you know, just making sure that we're all on that same page. And then we work every day to just to improve those procedures and improve those, you know, ways of communication and, um, and focus on that. And, mm-hmm. and I think it doesn't matter then if I change the company name even five years from now, again, it doesn't really matter because the same core elements are still being carried throughout. The same talent is still being carried throughout. You know, it's just, um, like I said, we're just, you know, we've rebranded it now where we're just a little bit more in tune with who we are today, but we're still the same awesome group of people. Right. Well, there's a few things I'm hearing in there that are the huge, you know, glaring sound bites to make sure they're clear. First of all, how easily it rolled off your mouth, off your tongue. It was like, you know, well, first of all, Luann, the key is that our core principles and our mission, our vision are the same. So Mm -hmm. you see what I have learned with working with so many business owners at this point is the ones that are successful, whether they're in business one year or 15 or 20 years have not skipped that step of having the conversation with themselves. What are my core principles? What is my mission? What is my vision for this? Right. And so you hear it over and over again with the ones like yourself who are truly have sat for many years in the seat of success. It's so normal to you that you actually know what they are. You've, you've, you enunciate them. And your, your point is I didn't change those. I'm, they're, they're my guideposts. They're my guiding lights on mm-hmm. everything I do on every project. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I've had the conversations with designers on and off air where they feel like that's a little bit of fluff and it's not, it starts everything, right? It's like the foundation of the house. It's like, let's put the foundation in, let's make it start strong. And then from there, we'll figure out what kind of siding and what kind of windows and what kind of roof we want, but we have to right. build the strong right. house first, right? Yeah. Right. And then the other thing is that um, the other point that I want to make in that is your confidence in discussing it. So I can imagine, A, the confidence you're bringing to your team. It's like, yeah, we're making a little pivot here, but isn't this fabulous, this pivot? We're in this together. We are a design team, yada, yada, yada. And then also, if there was the off 
chance conversation that one of your longtime loyal hospitality clients were to ever look at you and say, yeah, I'm not so sure. I mean, you're going to be my girl now that you're over there doing houses for people. I can hear that you would just look at them and, you know, inside voice would be, you're out of your mind. I'm the same person. It's the same company. Like, don't worry about what I'm building over here when you're doing something over there, right? But the outside right. voice is what you're doing. It's that complete confidence in that this is a good decision for you as the principal. This means that this is a good decision for everybody that works for me as my team. And guess what? That leads to good things and good decisions for you as my clients, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think the other key thing too is also how you as a person carry yourself. Like you said, self-confidence is important, but the other thing I, I tell my daughter over and over and over again is you constantly just remind yourself you live in grace, right? Mm. You give grace to others, you and you um, extend it and you live by the golden rule. I mean, that's just what it boils down to. And so um, I think when you are genuinely living a life like that, that also comes out. That's your personality and, and people are just naturally drawn. They want to work with someone who's going to be open and honest and fair and and, you know, if you do make a mistake, which we're all human and that does happen, you're the first one to be like, you know what, we did make that error and, you know, we're going to work with you to fix it and make it right. Because again, we're all human and things happen. Um, and so I think that's another key component of, you know, that kind of goes back to those core principles, that mission statement and who you really are as a company. I think that also speaks volumes. If, mm. if you're a very fair, honest type person, you know, that, that comes across and people want to work with like-minded people, right? They want to follow into those steps. They don't want to be working with someone who's going to constantly be changing the rules or be very combative or anything like that. Right. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. Um, I think that that's another key component that's important. Um, and if anything, I would say that's probably come even more in play in the last couple of years is, is showing that, you know, again, the company is firm and sound and solid and, but we're also compassionate and kind and grace and, um, and we believe in those values and it's, you know, it comes across in every single thing we do in every single day. I love it. I love it. Now, how about in the wheeze a little bit? Because we've talked about at a top level view some of the challenges that take with uh, rebranding and making a little pivot for a firm of your size. How about in the weeds? Where there is there anything that you can recall maybe in conversations with Natalie and her team where there was a, a, a valid suggestion? You know, Lise, I think you should be doing this. And you're saying, I hear you, but I'm not sure I, that I can, because you talked about it being layered in, right? So I get mm-hmm. that. We didn't just like rip the page out. Although right. I have to remember, uh, Kristen Thomas did that at Studio Thomas. She just ripped it out. She had, you know, I don't know, 10 or 20,000 followers, 16,000, whatever it was. And she said, I'm doing, I'm doing a do-over. <laughs> so you yeah. can do that. But I also don't think her firm, you know, th- the number of followers is one thing. But we're, when I think about the undertaking you have gone through, I'm more relating to the size of your firm and the revenues and the the size of the projects, right? So it's not Mm -hmm. about the followers. But so were there things where either you, maybe either Natalie and her team were making suggestions or you were saying, no, 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 let's just do this. And them saying, listen to me, this is what we do for a living. Let's take it easy. Are there, were there tough moments or tough uh, decisions in there, Lisa? Um, The toughest decision was, Originally, you know, our rollout plan since we started in January was a little bit different and COVID hit, you know, the pandemic hit March. Again, we all had extended spring break. So we had to kind of push that timeline out a little bit longer just because, again, you want to be, you know, March, April, even into May to some extent, you know, people were not in a mindset to even be looking at that type of stuff or Mm. thinking about those types of things. So I had to make some tough decisions from a standpoint of, okay, do we keep moving forward? Do we just pause? Do we roll back a little bit? Do we re-strategize any of this? And, um, you know, I I spoke again with Natalie and I spoke with a couple of my other people I use as consultants and, you know, ultimately I made the final decision, but just kind of listen to them too on everything. And then just, it's a gut to intuition as well. Um, mm. Cause I knew if I was reeling and feeling that way, like March, April, cause 
many small business owners at that point in time were wondering like, Hey, can we get the triple P because we all need to be able to survive for the next, you know, 45 <laughs> days. Um, so, you know, me sitting here saying, Oh, look at this beautiful interior and think about hiring me. That's not going to happen. I mean, okay. that, that was not, that's not where people's mindsets were. And so, um, I made a business decision to kind of pause a little bit on some of those things and wait to roll out and revamp some other things. So everything just kind of got extended out a little bit longer in a deadline. Ultimately, looking back, I still think that was the right decision. Mm. I might reevaluate that a year from now and tell you differently. I don't know, mm. but um, it was a lot of discussion points. You know, I spent some of that time instead internally redoing some things like, Hey, this is a great time now to work on that website. And this is a great time now to rethink how this procedure is done or how we do this or that or whatever internally. Um, and working on some of those, you know, to do list items that you never quite you never seem to. to get to. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, focus on that. And, and then, you know, then it was like, okay, now we're all starting to move again. Now we're all starting to travel again. Now we're all starting to think about sprucing up our homes and all because we've literally been in them nonstop. So now's the time to start marketing that again. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, that was a decision I had to make um, early on. And that was, that was hard. I mean, that was, you know, everyone was second guessing themselves. I feel like to some extent at that point in time, because none of us have a crystal ball. We don't know where this is going. Um, but you know, it, it was, it was a lot of discussions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Obviously, No, lot, I lot hear you. I mean, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, we've all gone through and I, just a disappointment. You were ramping up five, six months into for this January launch, and it has a rollout plan. And six or eight mm -hmm. weeks into the rollout plan, this happens. And, you know, look, everybody had a moment of that. But when you're actually planning something exciting that you've been working on, that's a little different than moving along, running business as business as usual, and having to deal with all the things that the pandemic brought, right? So you just right. have that extra layer of disappointment. And I love that you said that you do look around, you do ask your all of your adv trusted advisors, but ultimately there is that gut check, that intuition mm -hmm. gut decision that you have to do. I'm 110% in favor of that too. You know, when I've got a big decision to make, you can count, you know, the five or six people that are going to get a Voxer for me. I take all the information back in, but ultimately, you know, the buck stops with you you make a decision. Usually something somebody says sparks something in me that makes it so that it makes it clear the yes or the no of it for me. Right. It's like, right, Oh, right. I didn't think about that. So the answer is no, or I did think about that. Or, I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. So, Oh yes, let's go. Um, right. but there is that disappointment layer that you had to deal with. And I understand that. So here's the thing. So the, 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 the rebrand is that you are now PDG Studios, but you have these two divisions, more or mm -hmm. less. I don't know if you're going to call them divisions, but divisions within them that are part of this rebrand and this launch. And one is Bella Studio, and the other is Bella's Kitchen. And Bella mm -hmm. Studio is the arm of your business that is going to face more that high-end luxury residential design and doing right. those projects through that umbrella. And Bella's Kitchen is the arm of your business that is going to allow you to focus more on the philanthropic work. I've had the hardest time with that name, but I think I did at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I get a gold star. Yeah. I have to just stop and say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is, this is, these are the two things, right? So why don't you tell us a little bit about both of these, Lisa? So Bella's studio is, again, it's kind of where we can focus and play into the, the residential side. Obviously my daughter inspired that a little bit, but um Again, it's just the ability to kind of be a little bit more playful and fun and, and tie that in. I mean, it's all still under the big umbrella of PDG Studios, but uh, it allows us to kind of open up into a different division and open up into a little bit more um, fun and, and playfulness on that side. The philanthropic side of it, I'm super excited about, you know, we are starting to do a little bit of work, you know, initially the thought process was whatever work we would come in and we'll still be doing this to some extent, but um, a portion of our proceeds from our project work, we're going to donate back into the hospitality environment, um, whether it's through um, our design time that we're just going to go ahead and 
um, donate time towards or whether we're writing a check to somebody to help them pay that bill for another 45 days to keep that restaurant alive. Um, but the other side of that is, you know, um, I just believe so strongly in the philanthropy side. And I think there's just different ways we can do it. And, and right now, like I'm, I'm working with a friend right now as we're, um, I'm doing pro bono work for her to help her fix this tiny little lake house up that she has big plans for with, um, in conjunction with Airbnb and, and uh, will also allow her to kind of pay it forward to others in need as well. So all of that's still in progress right now. I'm not totally vamped out 100%, but we are working on the design side. That part I can handle. So um, it's fun and it's it's a great way just to kind of do something that you know you're giving back to the environment and and to people and to helping others and um, but also doing what I do really well, which is design. Mm. So it's it's fun and it's a fun little mental break at times um, to know that you know you get to do something that helps somebody else. Mm. And, and the thing is, first of all, I, you know, I think it's awesome that you are thinking about the restaurants, which are so much a part of your core business for the last Mm -hmm. 19 years. Right. And so that's outstanding. And then when you talk about this project with your friend, where she's, she, you said she hasn't figured out exactly how she will utilize this home in order for mm-hmm. her soul to be fulfilled, right? But right, for right. you, you know, you're coming to it and you're designing this space and that's your gift to the space and to her. So my right. question is, is I can hear um, that it's a genuine desire on your part to do this, Lisa. There's no question. Mm-hmm. It comes exactly through. But you know me, I got to go down the business lane. And so I have to imagine because you're also labeling it, you know, Bella's Kitchen, and this is your philanthropy. Yeah, see, now I'm not gonna be able to do it twice in a in a moment <laughs> show. <laughs> I told you it was just a miracle the last time. <laughs> Doing your charitable work. <laughs> um, the question I I want to know is is you could do that on the DL is my point. You could work with your friend. You could do it. You could look at it and go, you know what? This makes my heart happy to do it. But because it is becoming part of the new pivot in the business, I, what I, I, I don't want to attach anything on this that's not true to your soul. I know you're doing it for good reasons, but we can do things for good reasons and attach it. So how will you capitalize that? And that is not the right word, but how will you leverage it? How we, what is the thing? Will it be through a, bo- a blog post? I mean, will it be through social where, you know, there, if you're going to tell us you're doing it, you're telling us you're doing it so that people know. And that could be mm-hmm. just so other people know that you're interested in helping them. That could be the only reason, right? But is that what you're doing with Bella's Kitchen is you're putting a light on the, the, the projects that you take in order so that, um, the people themselves that are part of the project get a light so other people know that there's an opportunity there. And of course it does, you know, speak to your mission vision and the paying clients get the smiley, you know, warm, feel good feeling. Mm-hmm. Those are really great questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> you always challenge me. You know, I think, I think there's two parts to it. It feeds my soul for sure. And I think that, it's something I just feel so passionately strongly about. I've always been doing charity. Everyone knows I'm part of love 146 and I give back to that all the time. And it's even, you know, listed, we, we post on it sometimes that we've done things like that. Um, this is another way, another Avenue. I think that as a company, you know, we can show like, Hey, this is something that we are doing to help pay it forward. There are so many people that have paid it forward to me and helped mm-hmm. me over the years. And this is my ability to do the same. So if we end up finishing a project and we end up putting it in a blog post or through social or, or something along those lines, it's truly to help pay it forward for that person now and what their next step mm-hmm. of the journey is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have something already kind of going around in my head a little bit about like how to pay it forward to help those in need with all the California fires. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not going to talk about it just yet because it's still kind of noodling around in my head, but you know, it's those type of opportunities that I think that also help balance you. I feel that, you know, you, me as a person, like I, I genuinely want to help people. I, I want to do my business side and I want to do 
all those things. And I want to make sure my team is well taken care of and that, you know, we are structurally well and sound and, and moving forward and, and doing a great job and have great clients and all that. But I feel like the other part of me that has to be fed is I want to be able to give back. I want to give my talents, my God given talents and use them to the best of my ability to help others. Mm. And if that means that, you know, I can help with my daughter's theatrical group in costuming, even though I cannot sew to save my life, (laughs) um, I will do so because I have a creative mind and I can help think something through and I can surely sew a button on, but I couldn't sew the rest of the costume. Um, (laughs) But, you know, and if that means that I'm going to go help at my daughter's school and do something that, again, uses my creative mind, I will do that. Because, Mm -hmm. again, that's where I find joy and it also balances me out a little bit. And it also helps me be a better boss and a better employer and a better business owner um, because I feel like it's all full circle. That's part of who makes who you are. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to who you are as a company. And, um I think it's just really important to keep doing that. And there's going to be things that I'll do that I'll probably keep on the down low and I'll never even say I've done it. Right. Um, Because again, I think it's all about balance and, um, and I think that, you know, I've been very blessed and fortunate in many ways. And this is, you know, my ability, like right now I can't just write you a big fat check, you know, that that's not going to happen. And that doesn't bring me joy. If I just write you a big fat Mm. check for something that does no joy to me, I would rather physically be able to go and help and do something, um, being the hands and feet and, and actually doing the work and, and, and being that one to help somebody get to that next level. So, you know what I'm hearing? I think what I'm hearing is that this has been who you are for many, many years. It's who you are. It's your philosophy on life. It's what you really want to do. And it just was an opportunity in the rebranding to share Mm -hmm. the news of it with yeah yeah. see see that now I get that 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 makes total sense to me it's not like hey I was this company and now I think it's time to look good by doing this because that wasn't lining up for me I could feel that it is truly a passion for you to do it Lisa right it wasn't just a Mm -hmm. decision hey let's start to do some charitable work this will look good and so I (laughs) get it right it's really it's 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 the opportunity within the branding to do and circle back to what you said in the very right. beginning is when I sit and think about how I've developed and grown as a person and as a business, it's time to have the business face and website and branding reflect that. Right. Oh right. my goodness. That's again, such an aha moment. I love that. I get yeah, a gold star you, for that one, Lise. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You do. And I think too, the other part of that is you continue to surround yourself with like-minded people. It opens up doors mm. in different avenues that you maybe didn't even think about mm-hmm. or consider. Right. But you start working with like-minded people. Maybe, I don't know what this journey looks like. Maybe this will open up some other doors for us as we continue to grow and evolve as a company. And, um, that because of the philanthropy work will lead to something else or, or allow us to be able to be a a part of a team to work on some other really great project that we probably would not have thought about before. Um, And I think, again, this is just as we evolve and as you grow. And um, like you said, it's it's whatever your soul is, you know, that's in your soul that Mm -hmm. that doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Sometimes maybe it wasn't shining at that particular moment in time, but as I'm getting older and, um, you know, just living life and experience in life and raising my daughter. And, you know, I think that you start to view things a little bit differently sometimes. And, um, and I think, you know, you put things in perspective a little bit differently. And I think too, the pandemic certainly has um, made a lot of people put things in perspective in a different way or a different light as well. And so, again, this is just a, it's just like the perfect little storm, you know, 2020 has turned into a truly pivotal, launching point for the company and moving forward for Mm. the next 20, 40 years, whatever it might be. Mm. And, um, I think that, you know, again, like we said in the very beginning, I think all we can do is go up from here and, um, continue to rise and help others and, um, you know, be the hands and feet to, to do a great job for everyone. Yeah. I just, you know what it is. It really is that, that little moment of aha. There's, I know there are people like Susan Winterstein who owns Savvy Interiors in San Diego and has Savvy Giving by Design, right? It was, 
it was from early in her career that she knew that she wanted to do these two things. And if you've missed that episode with Susan, you've got to go back and listen to it. It's amazing. And we also have Wendy Glaster. It also reminds me of Wendy Glaster. You know, she has Mm -hmm. these, and she, these women have, it's always been part of their company DNA publicly and internally. And so that's good. And that's terrific. And well, you know, great for any of us that get that from the beginning, right? But I love that this is that this is a, a result of the reflection of yourself on like you said, you might have done it before, maybe maybe it wasn't always the first thing, maybe you were doing it in a personal way. It always was part of you. But in thinking about this, it's it's nineteen years in business. It's just what you said. Does this business look like I feel like? <laughs> right? It's like mm-hmm. as simple as that. And right. so you um and, and it is, it's a culmination of raising a child and getting her to her teen years. That's not so easy to do. And it teaches you <laughs> lessons in all kinds of ways. Um, but, and, and it, you know, it is all these things and it just becomes, and I just think that the final sort of, I just can't leave off the table on it is the courage it took to pivot a business of this size. Window Works mm-hmm. is, you know, a, a fraction of the size of your business. And when I think about if we were to completely come around and lean into all of the things that if we were to take the three partners and say, what's really important to us now? What, what we're, mm-hmm. you know, we've been doing this more than 35 years. What is really important to us now? Billy, my partner, fosters dogs. His whole family, his, his youngest daughter, his youngest child is 18 years old, and they have been fostering dogs, her, their, their entire you know, marriage and everything, to the point that this girl is going to go be a veterinarian. I mean, they just, it, it is... It is not to be underestimated what that means at any given time. He had a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, a 12-year-old girl falling in love with a dog and then four weeks later sending it back. (laughs) You know what I mean? And teaching her the lessons of how important it is for somebody to be there for the dogs in that interim period, right? Right. And the lesson of give all of your love to this dog because you want the dog to move on and go, go on, right? Not easy to do, but that's very important to his family. And um, we don't talk about that on the website at all. (laughs) We don't share that. It's, but I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is if we were to do a massive rebranding, it's like, to your point, it's something that's always been there. We would just tell people about it now. Mm -hmm. And that's Mm -hmm. what's happening for you. And I love it because I can hear how happy you are, Lisa. I can hear how joyful it is making you to just be out there and have reestablished your company to reflect all the things that are important to you from a design standpoint, from a business standpoint, from a project standpoint, and from a personal standpoint. That's what I'm hearing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah awesome. absolutely. Yeah, it takes yeah. a lot of guts. It does. And yeah, there's definitely some days you're kind of like, hmm, did I make the right choice? But in the <laughs> end, you go back to that gut intuition. You're like, yep, we're still good. We're and you got to live in this. your skin, right? You got to live in yeah. your skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, it's good. And, and, you know, even if I can be a mentor for just one person, mm. you know, out there, I think that would be, um, I think that's also icing on the cake, right? Because I've had so many great mentors in my life as well. And some people who know it and some people who don't even really realize they were a mentor to me and you don't even realize it. It's kind of like a subconscious thing. Right. Right. And so, you know, I look at it every day as, you know, am I happy with what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and how am I raising my child of showing her what it takes to do what you do and um, that it does take hard work and dedication and, you know, sacrifice and all of that. And, and you do all of that. Right. Um, but I also will tell you, I'm surrounded by a great village of people, you know, from consultants to my staff that work with me on a daily basis. Um, they inspire me and they make me want to keep striving to do more and do better and, and keep moving forward. Um, you know, cause frankly, we all could have said, 
March, April, whatever, like, mm-hmm. yep, we're throwing in the towel and we're done, See you know, you, enough with this. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, but we didn't, you know, instead it's like you dig in your heels a little bit harder and you say, okay, we're going to make it through and we're going to get to the other side and we're going to be stronger when we get there. Um, so it's awesome. It's awesome. You I know what? I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't go back and listen to our episode before I interviewed you today. Um, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I think I ended that episode saying, I wish I could come work for you. <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> I just had that thought again. I'm like, man, cause I feel like you were hiring at that point. And I remember, I think I even put it in the outro. I was just like, yeah. I'm sorry. If you could move to Houston and work for this lady, what wouldn't you want to, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, that's a great shout out. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, you yeah, just, uh, yeah. you, you know, it's, it's, it's so, it's inspiring to hear the way you have the pride in your firm and your, what you've built and what the others around you have built into it. I love that you have the extended team of consultants because you don't get to the level you get without having that and that you share the love and the credit. But what I hear, and this is the part I love, what I hear is at the core, your confidence and belief in yourself. And that's where it kind of stems from, right? I mean, I, I, I just, I don't know. I'm psychoanalyzing you now, Lisa. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> You're always too kind. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, I really appreciate your coming and sharing this journey with us, Lisa, because you know, there's big firms out there that have probably been thinking the same thing. How do I just change the ship? Well, you just do it. You do it with some planning. Like you said, there were strategies mm-hmm. and layers and consultants and you just don't, you know, just, you know, chuck it all up in the air. Um, but also too, for a smaller firm who doesn't have as much years or um, money and collateral and anything invested into the brand of a firm. Yes. If it doesn't feel right, shake it all up and, and, and bring it back out again. Right. 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 And I think at the end of the day, again, you have to keep in mind, you have to be true to yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't live this facade of something that's not truly you. Um, because people will see that and they will, you know, respond to that. And, um, and I think that, you know, and then you have to be okay with sometimes reevaluating things a little bit and just thinking it through of like, Hmm, what do I really want? You know, one of, um, the best pieces of advice I got was to sit down and I'm still working on it. It's a work in progress, Mm. but was sit down and evaluate the last 12 years of your life. And literally go through every single little thing that is happened in your life down to the cars that you bought, the houses that you bought, furniture, you've bought, whatever. And you think of it from a standpoint of if I had to do it over again, knowing what I know today, would I would have, would I have made that same decision to do whatever it was? Would I've taken that trip? Would I have Mm. bought that vehicle, whatever it might be. And if not, or that person that you were friends with or not friends with or whatever it is, you go through every little aspect of your life. And if not, why, why would I not do that again? Or what did I learn from that experience that I'm now moving forward with? And you're going to start seeing, I find this fascinating, which is why I'm still a work in progress through it. But I find it fascinating. You start seeing a pattern evolving Mm. of certain things And you start, and then also things that maybe you don't even realize you're harboring or holding a negative thought about or whatever it might be, you can kind of let it go. It's kind of like, you're like, why am I, why am I frustrated about that? That was stupid. Like move on next item. Right. Um, But you start to see again, a pattern and you start also seeing how much you have grown in a period of time because how you maybe responded 10 years ago to that situation and how you would respond today, maybe it's the same response or maybe it's completely different because now you're, you have a different level of grace Mm. um, and how you're revolt, you know, how you're going to um, react to that situation. And so, like I said, it's a really fascinating process to go through. I'm still journaling it through. I've, I've got a few more years to go, I think, but um (laughs) And it's not something you can just sit and do overnight. Like no. you, it, it takes time. You kind of start and stop. And, and it's, like I said, it's been fascinating, even down to the point of like, I even thought through vehicles I've owned since I was in college mm. and the decisions I had made 
for that vehicle when I bought or sold or whatever it might be. Right. And the emotions you have tied to that crazy vehicle, right? right. Like you it's don't so even realize true. it. It's so you true. Do. Yes. Yeah. It, and then you sit there and you go, huh, would I do that again? Maybe. Yes. No, I don't know. You know, and anyway, it's just, it's, it's, it's a fascinating way to kind of get back into your inner self and see how much you have grown and how you've evolved way, maybe things that you need to improve upon yourself, you know, maybe you're short tempered or maybe you're quick to judge or whatever it might be. And, um, those are little things that you're like, huh, I need to probably work on that a little bit. Mm. And I need to pause and think before I respond, whatever way it is. Um, I would think it also gives you the opportunity to see if you are knee deep into, you know, was it Einstein who said, if you keep doing the same thing and expect a different result, mm -hmm. you're completely insane, right? That's right. the opportunity right. to say, I am oh, I've done that again. I've done that again. I've done that again. Yep. It still pisses me off or it still upsets me or it still breaks right. my heart. It's sort of like, okay, <laughs> like, right. let's right. make a change here. Right. Yes. Right. And I think as a business owner, especially, I think that it's a really good protocol to go through because you, again, for me, it was fascinating because I started seeing some patterns evolving and I was like, huh, no wonder that same situation happened. It just happened this way, but it really was the same situation, you yes. know, and I needed to, I need to readjust that or I need to think about that. So if something similar starts to go down that path, not that that's happened just yet, but if it were, I pro I would hope that I would sit there and pause and reflect a little bit on it before I just respond. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, and it's kind of like even too, like when you respond to emails, like sometimes I, I know I am number one person that does this all the time, but I will email myself what I really want to say to somebody sometimes. <laughs> And, or just write it on a piece of paper so I can get that little bit out. And then I go back and I respond the way I really should respond in the graceful manner that should be. Um, we're all human, right? Yes, exactly. So, um, but again, it's, it's, again, it's that opportunity to say, wait a minute, let me think before I speak. Mm -hmm. Let me think about what is being said or done or how I'm responding. Um, and that's, you know, that's also how I approached this whole rebranding again was like, who am I? What am I doing? Where do I want to be? How does this look for us moving forward? How do we keep moving forward with the company, but also truly reflect who we are today, mm. who I am today mm. and, um, and move that forward. And, and then hopefully, hopefully I'm a great light to those that work with me that influence and, and give them the, you know, Hopefully I'm being a good shining light to them. Mm. And I'm a hundred percent sure of that. Like I said, yeah. when I'm, you know, need my next job. I'm coming down. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to deal with the dog days of summer down here. And hurricane, but, well, you know. you're going to have to deal with, that. I don't know how to design. So you have to find something for me to do. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness, Lisa! Thank you. T such such great advice all around. I, I'm so grateful that you know you came back on the show, and I'm you know we probably gonna have to do it again in another year or two because it's so fascinating yeah. to see how you morph and you grow and you keep leaning into um, more of what really is fulfilling to you as a full human being. You know, so yeah. thank you so much, Lisa. Well, thanks for having me so much, and I would love to come back. It's always fun to talk with you. It was so nice to get a chance to talk with Lisa again. I mean, honestly, though, can you imagine being in this position, right? Here you are, you're gearing up and carefully planning a rebrand for the beginning of 2020, and then bam, a pandemic hits. What do you do? Do you put it on the back burner? Do you go full steam ahead? Do you do something in between? And, you know, I'm sure there's others of you that had similar things that you were planning, whether it was a rebrand or like me, planning Luann Live. I, if I told you the number of times we changed what we would do with Luann Live in the months between March and July, it's beyond because it kept you know, okay, how about this? What if it looks like that? What if it does this? Right. And the thing is, is that there is that disappointing, that disappointed factor in there, right? Because I know for me, when we planned Luann Live the first time, we literally a month before put it in the calendar for the Tuesday afterwards to have the autopsy meeting. All right. So me, Christy, Nicole Heimer, um, you know, we, Kim, we, we were all in that meeting. And it was like, what went good? 
What went not so good? What did we find that we shouldn't repeat? What did we, what ideas came to us during the event that we were like, oh, if we had done this now, this would have been amazing. And I felt so good coming out of not only the event, but the autopsy of the event that we were going to kill it next time. (laughs) And guess what? It's completely different. It's like really, really figuring out how to design and execute a kitchen remodel. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, 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 here, here, go design and remodel an Airstream bus. (laughs) Like It's like, wait, that's a completely different animal. So, So the thing is, right? When the rug gets pulled out from under us, we have to, we have to, we have to keep moving, right? We have to not sit in the wind being knocked out of us, okay? Even though it is, we have to get up and we have to give our time, ourselves the time and the space to think. We need to gather advice and we need to come out, you know, the other side, which is exactly what Lisa did. All right. And so for things like Lisa's rebrand and Luann Live, there was no backup plan. There didn't need to be, right? What could possibly derail a rebrand or a live event? Okay. So I don't think you always need a backup plan, but what you do need is to be resilient and you need to be intentional about how you're going to react and move forward. Okay, so because success is the long haul, right? We look for opportunity and possibilities, even in tough times. And I think that Lisa really represented that in her conversation. And I think that it's something to for all of us to be inspired by that. It, it can, you can, you might need to take a minute with something, but get back on track. And, and, and what I always find is everything happens for a reason. And it might take a second again to see that silver lining and to see the reasoning behind it. But you have to pay attention. You have to look for it, right? But they're there. The reasons are there. And whether it's a a reason for you to be challenged and grow, whether it's just another new idea that's going to come from it, but whatever the setback is, just sit in it analyze it, find the lessons in it and move forward. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Lisa, for sharing all that with us. Okay. Um, and of course, speaking of Luann live, it is on for February, 2021, February 3rd, 4th and 5th, virtually it's going to be off the hook. Okay. (laughs) Because I have had the last nine months to think about it. All right. So, um, it's, you know, for me, it's, it's Luann live. It's about the conversation, right? That's what the, the title of the event is because that's what it is for me. So there will be opportunity for me and you to talk. Okay. This is not going to be an event where we just talk at you. For me, it's the engagement. So I promise you we are building in that engagement. And if you want to know when registration goes live, go to luannlive.com and put your name on the list. Okay. And I would say, please, please, please come to the book launch party on December 10th. Okay. Um, that is going to be a virtual Zoom free. That's a free event, just fun and just a celebration with the co-authors. And we are going to be having special little prizes during that event for Luann Live. Okay. So if you want to know when that event registration is open, go to Luann Nigara dot com forward slash launch Luann Nigara dot com forward slash launch. Okay. Now back to Lisa. The thing is, what I loved is that she stayed steady. Okay. And she worked on her website, on her internal systems, and she took care of that nagging to do list that we all have. And we sometimes don't get around to addressing. So instead of wallowing in all the things that was going to be, she got back down to work. Okay. And took care of some of those back burner projects. All right. So if you need to get organized and help you get your your design firm systemized, then I highly suggest that you sign up for My Doma Studio. Okay. My Doma Studio brings your orders, your invoices, your online payments, your design packages, your product sourcing, your time tracking, and it even has a client portal all together. All right. Go to mydomastudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. Okay. So one final comment about Lisa that I loved is that she really kept going back to her core principles, right? This is, this is key also. And you'll notice this, the more experienced you are in business, the more you realize it all does start with you. And you have to get clear 
on what it is you are and who you who, who you work for, who you stand for, what you think, what you believe. Because then you start to guide all the decisions by this, your core principles. And for Lisa, she said, to live in grace, to give grace to others, to live by the golden rule. All right. She said that at the end of the day, she needs to feel happy in her skin and the choices that she's made and how she showed up in the world in her business. OK, so through the rebrand and the, and the pandemic, her core values have not changed. And it's really important to establish these, like I said, because these are the guiding posts for all of your decisions. And we have tons of decisions coming at us day after day after day. But you have to measure them against something. And if you set your principles and your core values down for yourself, every decision can be measured against that. Does this feed into, does this support my mission vision for my company? Does it support my core values? Okay, because this is hard running a business and there has to be something that makes it just a tiny bit easier, right? So I find that when you measure your decisions against your core values and your mission, it does help you get to clarity quicker, okay? So if you came here for Lisa's advice on how to rebrand, what would she say to you in final closing, right? I think she'd say, take a good look at what makes you, you. Evaluate your life choices, what makes you truly happy, and how can you translate this into your businesses, okay? So for Lisa, a core principle is giving back, and that's why she expanded this with her rebrand, okay? And I just want to say that if charitable work and this type of core brand is very important to you, then I would suggest that you also go and listen to episode number 386 with Wendy Glaster and number 164 with Susan Winterstein. These are also two fantastic women that have incorporated their core values literally intertwine into their business just the way Lisa has done with Bella's Kitchen. And so Susan Winterstein in particular has taken her Savvy Given by Design nationally. All right. So you'll hear in 164 when it was just her chapter. And since then, I, there's probably a dozen designers that have open chapters across the country. So that's a very developed program, but it, you know, she is living her core values. And with Wendy Glaster in episode 386, I asked an innocent question why there were these mentions on her website for these various organizations. How did it connect to her? And on the spot, she decided to share with us the very personal reason why. So it's a very powerful episode of taking heartache, heartbreak, hardship, and really turning it on its head to help other people. And you can see in here how it helped Wendy in the process as well. So very powerful episodes, okay? So that's 386 and 164. All righty. What do you think? Has COVID helped you take pause and reevaluate your business? Has it allowed you some time to reflect on your core values? And I would say if you haven't established your mission and core values, take this opportunity. All right. This week, calendar some time to reflect on what makes you you. Write it down and share it with your clients and your team and then start to craft your message around it. Okay. That's how you do it. It doesn't have to be big. It just has to be you. Just true to you. That's all. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you like this episode. Um, I'm so grateful for all of the recent iTunes reviews. We had lots of new reviews in September and October. Um, truly, truly, I love reading them and I appreciate when you take the time to do it. And I am looking forward to seeing you at the book launch event and at Luann Live. So thanks a ton for joining me today. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, 
or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land and where I'm going to be, all of that is found at LuannNigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.